Go ahead and grab your word. We're going to get right to it today. I feel like preaching this morning. Is that all right? Certain places you go to, it feels like family. Like family. I, I don't believe this is one of those places. I believe you all are family. So I'm going to act like this is Christian Faith Center this morning. It's always a good day when I have the opportunity to stand before God's people. But it's a special day when I get a chance to do it with my beautiful bride, Jen. She's here with me this morning. We got our, our young boy here with us, too, running around and impact kids. It's good. It's a good day. First Kings, First Kings, First Kings, chapter 18. We're going to be there this morning. First Kings, chapter 18. I'm going to begin reading at verse 41. First Kings is in the Old Testament. A lot of times people can't find it. They're going to throw it up on the screen, I believe. If it's too far for you to see, just act like you got it. Amen. You in First Chronicles somewhere, just act spiritual. <laughs> y'all know y'all didn't done it before. Bishop Davis say, go to Titus. I'm like, Titus, I'll land in Timothy and just act like I'm there. <laughs> First Kings chapter 18. You dare say there? I can't find it. Say, Lord, help me. First Kings chapter 18, verse 41. It says, then Elijah said to Ahab, go up, eat, drink, for there is the sound of the abundance of rain. So Ahab went up to eat and drink, and Elijah went up to the top of Caramel. Then he bowed down on the ground, put his face between his knees, and said to his servant, Go up now, look towards the sea. So he went, and he looked, and said, There is nothing. He did this seven times. Go again, said the prophet. Verse 44 says, Then it came to pass the seventh time. That he said, there is a cloud as small as a man's hand rising out of the sea. So he said, go up, say to Ahab, prepare your chariot and go down before the rain stops you. Now it happened in the meantime that the sky became black with clouds and wind and there was a heavy rain. So Ahab rode away and went to Jezreel. Then the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah and he girded up his loins and read ahead of Ahab to entrance of Jezreel. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your word. We thank you, God, that you're so good to us. God, we know that you are here in this place. We sense your presence. We ask that you would flex your muscles in this place. We ask, God, that no one would leave the same way, but God, allow us to leave like we've had an encounter with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to talk to you this morning from the topic, the quiet storm. Everyone say the quiet storm. Where I'm from, and I believe it to be the case here, there used to be a radio program that used to come on called the quiet storm. How many of you remember that? Say, oh, y'all ain't been saved all your life. It used to come on around 10 p.m. where I'm from. Here, I believe it was 99.5, the quiet storm used to come on and you knew the quiet storm was coming on because the sound began to change. See, where I met, the sound would go a little something like this. Y'all know, y'all know, y'all know what I'm talking. I'm in your house now, y'all know what I'm talking good. And you knew based upon that sound that the music was about to change. See, before that, everything was kind of upbeat. Quiet storm come on. Sets the mood. The tone changes. Mood changes. Vibe changes. Everything changes because the sound changed. In, in a wedding, everybody comes out. You got the little... Flower girls, they come out. You got the 
groomsmen and you got the bridesmaids. They come out to their music and everything like that. And then there's a portion of the wedding where the sound changes. And whoever's doing the wedding, sometimes they say, all rise. And then the bride's music comes on. They shut the doors because they don't want nobody to see the bride. And then they open the doors and, and the bride starts coming in. But, but you know the bride is about to enter because the sound changes. See, I, I, I truly believe that sound proceeds promotion. And, and you can tell that you are entering into a new season because the sound is changing. When, when me and my wife were pregnant with our son, I say me and her because both of us is pregnant. <laughs> Y'all know it take two to tango. Come on, come on. But when we were pregnant, the doctors would tell us, you know, it's important, it's vital for your baby's development that you speak to the baby and play music because sound helps the baby's brain develop. It, it, it's vital to your son's development sound is and, and this is the important thing about our our spiritual walk with christ the sound that we release is important it's it's vital to the development of our faith so you you, you hear something before you see it uh, elijah says i hear the sound of the abundance of rain you, you hear it before you see it. You, you hear a jet before you see it. How, how many of you ever heard a plane before? You looked up, you ain't seen nothing, then all of a sudden you saw it. Because you hear it before you see it. A, a motorcycle, you hear it before you see it. Sound proceeds promotion. And this is what I believe. I believe that when, when you were placed in your mother's womb, God seated a sound on the inside of you to be released back to him before you go into your next season. I said, I believe that before you were placed in your mother's womb, God seated you with the sound to give back to him before you go into your next season. Which means that your season is moving at the speed of your obedience. That there's a sound trapped up on the inside of you that you have to release today in order to see what God sees over your life. See, before you see anything, there must first be a sound that's released. And, and, and most of the time, we come in praise and worship, and you know what we do? We watch the worship team. They up here jumping, they up here singing, their hearts out, and you're like, oh, this is good. They, they, they singing real good today. Or if they don't sing your song. Oh, they, they didn't sing Oceans today. Worship wasn't that good. They, they didn't sing my song today. Worship was just I. See, and, and what we've done, we've made the sound about us. But the sound in you was never about you in the first place. It's about what you can give back to God. See, if you're waiting on God to do something for you before you release the sound, then your relationship with God is based upon you. See, your worship is for him. i said it again. Your worship is for him. Worship should be vertical. It should never be about you. That there's a sound in you that's waiting to be given back to him so that he can show you who you are. See, there's two types of people on your row. We're about to do some inventory right now. There's a person on your row that says, I will praise God because he's been good to me, because he's blessed me, because I got what it was that I was praying for. And then on the other side, there's a person that says, I'm going to praise God in spite of. I, I, I ain't seen everything that I've been praying for. I haven't gotten everything that I've been praying for, but in spite of. 
in, in, in spite of, I'm still go praise God. Because if he don't do nothing else for me, the fact that I'm here this morning is proof enough that God has been, oh, I, I thought I was in Impact Church this morning. I, I said the fact that I'm still here this morning and I can let air in my lungs is proof enough that God has been good to me. Can you do some inventory real quick? Can you see who's on your row? Can you see if you beside a because of person or an in spite of person? As a matter of fact, check yourself. Are you a because of praiser or are you in spite of praiser? Come on, let's take about 30 seconds to lift up our hands, lift up our voices, and give God some crazy praise in this place. Come on, release a sound. Elijah said, I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. Can, can you hear rain before you see rain? See, I'm an old country boy. My, my dad used to take me outside when I was a little boy, and he'd say, can you smell it? I said, smell what, daddy? He said, smell rain. He said, you smell it? I said, what did it smell like? said, it smells fresh. It smells different. And, and you get good enough, you can smell rain about to come. The environment changes. But, but, but when you're really good, you can hear rain before it starts raining. Elijah's saying, I don't see it. I don't even smell it. But I hear it. And when you don't see anything, when you don't smell your season changing, when, when, when you can't see how God is going to work it out, can you hear that he's working it out? When, when you can't see how things are going to work itself out, when you can't see if God is actually doing it, when you can't tell what is going on, can you hear what God is speaking over your life? And this is the reality. When it seems like God is up to nothing, God is up to something. When it seems like there is no movement, God is moving on your behalf. When it seems like things are at a standstill, God said things are moving in your direction. Do I have anybody in the house that says I'm expecting and I'm anticipating God to move on my behalf. I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. So, so there are four questions that I want to ask you today. The first one being, what does God want to do in you? What, what, what does God want to do in you? Because God always wants to do something in you. He, he wants to do something in you. So, sometimes you, you can't hear the sound outside of you. Sometimes first you have to hear the sound in you. See, when you have made up in your mind and you make a decision... Regardless of what I see, I'm going to rely on what he said. But regardless of how it may seem, I'm holding on to the promises of God. Regardless of what it may look like, I believe God is doing something in me. See, see, y'all know the word. Y'all talk very well here at Impact Church. So y'all know this. In Hebrews it says, faith is the substance of what? Things hope for the evidence of things. Not seeing, most people believe that the opposite of faith is doubt. Opposite of faith is not doubt. The opposite of faith is what you see. It don't take faith to see what you see. I, I, I'll prove it to you. When you came in and you sat down today, you didn't say, it. I'm going to use my faith to sit down. No, you looked at the chair, you aligned your butt with it, and then you sat down. It didn't take faith to do that. But it takes faith to believe God's promises when what you see does not line up with what he said. Uh, Elijah is sitting here with his head buried between his knees, not seeing any rain. 
But God told him, and he spoke to God, God, I'm believing you that it's going to rain. And God said, it's about to rain. And so what does he do? He starts preparing like it's about to rain. See, preparation is the proof for expectation. I said again, preparation is the proof for expectation. Are you making room for what God wants to do in you? Are, are you moving stuff around for what God wants to do in you? Are, are you making space for what God wants to do with you? You can't say, God, I, I, I'm believing that you would increase me. I'm believing that you would fill me. I'm believing that you would enter my life and you're not making space for him. See, at, at, at our church, me and my wife, we, we just redesigned my office. And it was filled with stuff. But in order for us to get the new stuff in, I had to move the old stuff. And a lot of times we say, God, I, I, I want to experience the newness. I, I, I want to have a new experience. But we hold on to the old stuff. And so when he comes with the new, he can't position it in our lives because our lives are so cluttered with the Oh, but if you'll make space for him, which means you have to clean out the clutter, which means you have to clean out some old stuff. And granted, granted, some of the old stuff may be good, but what he has is better. What, what he has is greater. Make room for what God wants to do. Bump your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, make room for what he wants to do in you. You got to make a decision, a conscious decision that I'm going to make room for what the Holy Spirit wants to do in me. This is one of the things that I've made a core value of mine, and I've said it before. I'll say it again. We're born looking like our parents, but we die looking like our decisions. And if you're not careful, you will die looking like the wrong decisions that you've made. But, but I've have made up in my mind, I got made up in my mind, I, 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 I've determined over me, over my wife, over my son, over our family, that we will make decisions that reflect Jesus. Even when it's uncomfortable. Even when we don't know how it's going to work out. Even when we can't see or smell rain, we believe that it's going to rain for the simple fact that God said it's going to rain. Is there anything that has been spoken over your life that you don't yet see? Three people, okay. Let, let, let me check with this side. Is there anything that's been spoken over your life that you don't yet see? How many of you believe that it is possible? How many of you believe that it is there? Elijah told his servant, go back. It is there. And sometimes you've got to remind yourself, no matter what it may look like, no matter how you feel, it is there there it is there it, it, it is there. and this is this is a great reminder when you're down to nothing when, when you're in the worst drought of your life when, when, when there has been no breakthrough when, when, when there has been no miracle when there has been no advancement you got to remind yourself it is there I, I, I know it's there because God told me it's there and if God said it I believe it that settles it if God said it then I can take it to the bank baby if God said it then I have nothing else but to believe is there anybody here that say I may not see it yet but I believe it is so it is there. Preparation is the proof that I'm expecting God to do what he said he was going to do. I have to make room because God wants to do something in me. God wants to do something in me. It is there. And this is very difficult because a lot of us have gotten to the point where we, we have faith in God, but we trust in ourselves. And if God doesn't do it on the first time, 
we start manufacturing the blessing. How, how many of you ever been there before? God, I, I believe in you, but I'm tired of waiting. Come on, single people. God, I'm trusting you, but he looked good. Lord, I, I'm staying faithful, but she everything that I want. God, I'm, I'm believing in you, but how many years do I have to believe? And our faith is in God, but our trust is in ourselves. And we begin to make our own breakthroughs, and they collapse because they're man-made. We, we can't create nor make rain happen in our lives. But we try to go outside with a bottle of water and we try to open it, throw it up, get up under it. It don't work like that. We, we have to be patient. We have to be faithful. We have to be steadfast. And we have to continue to believe until we see what God says manifest. Sometimes you have to see it before you see it to see it. See, first God shows it to you in the spirit. It paints an image in your head. And then you have to imagine it. And then you pray for it until you see it manifest in the flesh. You have to see it before you see it to see it. Just say that. I have to see it before I see it to see it. And it sounds crazy, doesn't it? Because we, we live in an instantaneous society. We, we go to our, our, our restaurants, we pull up to the window, and they just throw the food in the car. <laughs> Let them take a little bit on them hot fries. Oh, you're going right back around. My fries not hot. <laughs> or, or what about when your Wi-Fi slow? You can tell how saved a person is. Based upon the speed of that Wi-Fi. That Wi-Fi start lagging, it tests your, tests your faithfulness, don't it? Especially when you're trying to send a message and it, that bar just don't go all the way across. We, we live in an instantaneous society and we don't want to wait for anything. But anything that arrives too early, arrives too small. Anything that arrives prematurely, arrives too small. If your, if your blessing arrives before God intended it to, it's not developed fully for you in the season that you're in. You can't rush God's development for your blessing. And I know it feels like you're about to have a breakdown. I, I know it feels like you're about to lose your mind. I know it feels like everything is coming up against you. I, I know what it feels like, but thank God he does not call us to our feelings. Our faith has nothing to do with what we feel. It has everything to do with what he said. I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. God wants to do something in you. Number two, what does God want to do around me? God wants to do something in you. God wants to do something around you. First Kings chapter 18 verse 42 says, so Ahab went up, he ate and he drunk, and Elijah went up to the top of Mount Caramel, and he cast himself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees. You reveal what you really desire by the passion of your pursuit. If Elijah would have just stayed on level ground and said, listen, God's going to do it. I don't have to pursue God with my faithfulness. I don't have to go pray about it. I'm just going to put my faith out there. Guess what? It never would have happened. But he believed that God wanted to do something bigger than him. He, he believed that God wanted to do something greater than him. If what you're praying for stops with you, it's not big enough. One of the things that God asked me four years ago, I never forget it. He, he said, if you got everything that you've been praying for, 
everything that you've been praying for, would it change you or would it change the world? And that's something you got to leave here thinking about today. If you got everything that you've been praying for, would it just change you and your family or would it change the world? I don't want nothing that just changes me. I, I, I want to pray prayers that changes the world around me. I want to I want to pray prayers that changes demographics and, and, and geography. I want to pray prayers that changes the climate. I want to pray prayers that changes something bigger than me. If it stops with me, it's not big enough. God wants to do something around you. Number three, what does God want to do through you? What does God want to do through you? How many of you believe God wants to do something great through you? Oh, come on, Impact. I said, how many of you believe God wants to do something great through you? That, that's a great response if you're at the PGA and you're on hole number nine and there's a great putt. It's a great golf clap. I said, how many of you believe God wants to do something great through you. See, it, it, it's not what it seems. I, I know what it may look like. I, I know that your situation may not look like what he spoke over you, but, but if you'll just stay put, God is going to show you what he's up to. I, I remember going to a Broadway show one time. And about an hour into the show, the curtains closed. People got up, started leaving. And me and my family, we stayed there. And about 15 minutes later, they opened the curtains back up. And the people had gone. They thought everything was over. The show was over. Let's go home. But what they were doing, they were, they were changing the scenery behind the curtain. And sometimes in your life, God closes the curtain not to tell you that this thing is over, but just to change the scenery to reveal to you the new season that you're about to walk into. Oh, oh, what, what, what about, what about my, my movie, my movie heads, my movie buffs out there? You go to a good Marvel movie, right? Go, go to a good Marvel movie. You, you sit down. You watch the movie. The movie ends. The credits start rolling. And people start leaving. And, and, and you, you, you've been to a Marvel movie before, so you know. People, you, you, you went, they, they try to get up and say, no, 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 what y'all doing? Y'all sit back down. It's not over yet. There's more. Trust me. Trust me. Trust me. They say, but, but the credits is rolling. Trust me. There's more. I, I know it looks like it's over, but there's more. I, I know the credits are rolling, but there's more. I, I, I know people are leaving. I know people are walking out, but there is more. I, I, I know the music is it's fading out, but there is more. And, and if you just remain patient, you will see a snippet of your future. See, Marvel has become synonymous with, with, with letting the movie in, rolling the credits, and then giving a preview to what is next. Well, they just took a page from God's book. Because God, he'll let the movie play. He'll let the credits roll. So the people that's not really with you will leave. The people that's not really for you, let them walk out. The, 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 the people who gave up on you, let them go. The, the people who didn't see what God saw in you, you let them leave. And then he, 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 he shows you that there is more. Is there anybody in here excited that, that this is not the end, but God has more for you? I said, is there anybody excited that this is not the end? God 
has so much more. Yeah, yeah, y'all sit down. I got, I got three minutes left, y'all. Making me nervous, making me nervous. Number four, what, what does God want to do for me? I believe that God wants to do something for you so significant. I believe that God wants to do something for you so great. I believe that God wants to do something for you so different. If you'll just remain patient, if you'll just stay seated while the credits are rolling, what you're about to see is greater than what you've ever seen. God wants to do something for you. As a little kid, I love Sundays. I mean, I absolutely love Sundays because I knew Sunday lunch was going to be clutch. My mama throws down. Oh my God. I couldn't, I couldn't even think about the word because I was thinking about what we were having for lunch when we got home. Man, oh man. Uh, third Sunday was chicken Sundays. Oh my God. Mac and cheese, collard greens. And, and we'll sit down and we'll be eating and it'd be good. And then she would come around and she would take up our plates and she would clean the table and she would make sure that you kept your fork. She, she said, keep your fork. And when she said, keep your fork, I knew something sweeter was on the way. When mama said, keep your fork, I knew something better, more delicious. More goodness was coming. I, I knew when she said, keep your fork, that a little something extra was, was about to take place. And today, Impact, I came all the way from Creedmoor, North Carolina to tell you, keep your fork out. Keep, keep your fork out. God has something better for you than what you've seen. You're about to see the hand of God move on your behalf like you've never seen before. You're about to see God move like you've never seen before. You're about to see waves of blessings like you've never seen before. If you believe that, make some noise in this place. How many of you believe there's more? So, real quick then, I'm going to get out your way. That, that, there's five things that we do. We hear, we pray, we prepare, we see, and then we praise. We hear, we pray, we prepare, we see, and then we praise. Praise is so important. Because it's an indicator that I'm expecting to see what I've never seen before. It's so important because it takes the attention and the focus off of me and it puts it back on him. I made up in my mind that every blessing that God gives me, I'll turn it back into praise. Because every blessing that does not turn back into praise turns into pride. And I start to believe that I made a way out of no way. I start to believe that I made this happen. I start to believe that I made that door open for me. And the reality is I did none of those things. He did those things. And so every opportunity that I get, I must praise God. We hear, we pray, we prepare, we see, we praise. What I truly believe is your next miracle is in your mouth. 
So can we stand to our feet? And for the next 30 seconds, can we give God a crazy praise in this place? Come on, can we lift up our hands? Can we open up our mouth? Can we give God some glory in this place? Come on, shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Let the redeemed of the Lord shout so. Yes. Come on, praise him. Like you're about to see the rain that you hear. Come on, praise him. Come on, shout this. It is there. How many of you believe it? How many of you believe it? Well, can we try that again? Can we praise God like it is there? Can we shout like it is there? Can we shout like... Come on, open up your mouth. Shout yes! Yes!